In this video, we're going to take a quick break from our notes application to talk about a JavaScript feature that we're going to be using throughout the course. That is ES6 arrow functions, and we're going to take a moment to explore them over in the playground directory in isolation. Then, once we know how they work and how they differ from standard ES5 functions, we'll actually integrate them into our note application. Let's kick things off by creating a brand new script in that playground directory. I'm going to call this to hyphen arrow function.js. And in here, we're going to mess around with some examples exploring this new syntax. Let's start with a simple example. I'm going to make a standard function like the ones we've been creating so far. I'll create a constant called square. And this little square function is going to take in a number and return the square of that number. So I can call this single argument something like x. And all I need to do is return x times x, and we're done. Now, at this point, we have a regular function which we can use. I'm going to console.log, whatever comes back from calling square, and I'll pass in a number like 3. Now, the square of 3 would be 9, since 3 times 3 is 9. Let's go ahead and make sure it's working. Down below in the terminal, I'll use cd dot dot forward slash playground to navigate into the playground directory once I'm here. I'm going to clear the terminal output and use nodemon to fire up our script. So nodemon to hyphen arrow hyphen function dot js. And once I run it, I would expect to see the number nine print. And that is exactly what we're getting. So we have a regular function in place. How do we create an arrow function? Let's comment out our existing square function and recreate it using the arrow function syntax. Now down below, we're going to start that off much the same way by defining a variable. I'm going to create a constant called square exactly like we did up above. Then after the equal sign, we define our arrow function. Now the arrow function syntax is slightly different than a standard function. The first difference is that we don't use the function keyword at all. We actually start with our arguments list. So right here, after the equal sign, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my arguments list. Next up, we put the arrow in arrow function by using the equal sign followed by the greater than symbol to create this little arrow. From there, we can set up our curly braces and define what the function is supposed to do. So in our case, we can set up the same argument we had up above. We're going to have just a single one x, though we could have zero or we could have 44. And inside of the function itself, all we're going to do is return x times x exactly like we were doing up above. Now, if we go ahead and save the program, we can see we're getting the exact same result. Down below, the number nine is indeed printing, even though we're using this new syntax. Now that we have a basic arrow function in place, let's start to explore some of its hidden features that make it a tool worth using. And the first is its shorthand syntax. With a lot of the functions we end up writing in JavaScript and Node.js, they end up being pretty simple. We take in some arguments and immediately return some result. Now, this might not seem like the most real world function out there, but we already have functions of a similar pattern in our application. In notes.js, for example, we have one of those functions right here, which we pass to filter. It takes in an argument. It immediately returns some result. We did the same thing for our other filter call, and it's something we'll be doing over and over again throughout the class. Now, when we do this, there is an alternative syntax we can use to create a more concise arrow function, and we're going to explore that now. So right here, let's comment out our second version of square and create a third version. So const square equals. And right here, we're going to start much the same way as we did up above. We are going to set up our arguments list. And once again, we can take in as few or as many as we need, in this case, just one. Then after the arguments list, we move on to our arrow once again, exactly like we did up above. Now here's where things differ. If our function was just going to have a single statement which returned something, we can put that something right here, which means I can just type out x times x. There's no need for curly braces. There's not even a need for the return keyword. Whatever you put right after the arrow is going to be implicitly returned. Now, if I save the program, what do we get down below? We get nine. And if I were to switch up the value, swapping three out for two, I can see that four is showing up down below. 
Now you're not gonna be able to use this shorthand syntax for every arrow function you create, only for simpler ones where you immediately return some sort of value. If you have more complexity to your function, such as an if statement or a for loop, you would indeed use the long form version where you set up curly braces and add as many lines of code as you need right inside. So sometimes we'll use standard arrow functions and if we can, we'll take advantage of the shorthand syntax when possible. Now I wanna take a quick moment to switch gears and talk about how arrow functions work in the context of methods. So arrow functions as properties on an object. Let's start by commenting out both of our lines from the previous example and moving on to our second one down below. For this one, we're gonna define an object. Let's create a const and we'll create an object useful for someone like an event planner. So I'm gonna name this variable event. The value is indeed going to be an object and for the moment, we're gonna set up two properties. The first name is going to be a string and for this, we can just pick a name for our fictitious event. Let's go ahead and do something like a birthday party. So we'll say we're throwing a birthday party and the other property is going to have a function value. This method is gonna be called something like print guest list. Now for the moment, we don't have a guest list, but that's okay. We're gonna set the property value equal to a standard function for now. And all we're going to do is use console.log to print a little title for our guest list, saying something like guest list for, followed by the event name. So guest list for birthday party. To do this, we're gonna use console.log and we'll start off with some static text, something like guest list for, then a space followed by the actual event name. So we're gonna read that property value. Right here, we know that with our methods, with our functions as object properties, we have access to the original object via the this binding. So this is a reference to our object right here, which means we can access properties on this, like this dot name. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and use it down below. Event dot print guest list. And at the end of the day, when I save the script, I would expect to see my one message printing and that is exactly what I get down below. We have guest list for birthday party. Now let's swap out our function for an arrow function like we did up above. So we're gonna take it from looking a bit like this to looking more like what we had here. To do that, we remove the function keyword, starting off with our arguments list. And all we need to do from there is put the arrow in between the arguments list and our curly brace that starts the code block. This is indeed the valid syntax for getting this done, but if we save the program, we're gonna notice we don't get the result we might be expecting. Down below, I have guest list for undefined printing. So clearly it is unable to find the name property and put birthday party in there. And that is because arrow functions, they don't bind their own this value, which means that we do not have access to this as a reference to this object because of the fact we're using an arrow function. So arrow functions aren't well suited for methods, properties that are functions, when we wanna access this. So in this case, it would be best to use a standard function. I'm gonna revert back to the code we had before. Now we have a working application, but it doesn't mean we're stuck with this exact definition. There's actually an ES6 method shorthand that allows us to use a shorter, more concise syntax while still having access to standard function features like a this binding. So right here, to do that, what we do is we remove the function keyword and we also remove the colon. So it goes from the method name right into the arguments list, quickly followed by the function body. This is indeed a standard function which does have a this binding. It is not an arrow function. It's just using an alternative syntax available to us when we're setting up methods on objects. If I save the program, we are back to a working state using this more concise syntax. Now, why exactly do arrow functions avoid their own this binding? And there are plenty of examples and we're going to explore one right now. Let's go ahead and add some more data onto event. We have the name property. We're also going to add a guest list property. This is going to be an array of strings where each string is the name of a guest who's going to attend. I'm gonna to go to my own birthday party, so I'll toss myself in there. I'll also invite Jen and Mike 
We'll limit this one to three guests, a nice small gathering. And now the goal is to print that guest list just below the summary. So we're going to add some code right here. We have guest list for birthday party. Now we're going to list out each individual guest. I'm going to get that done using the for each method on arrays. So I have access to my array via this dot guest list. On there, we have the for each method similar to filter. It takes in a function. This function gets called one time for every array item. So once for each guest, and we get access to the guest via this first argument. So each item could be called a guest, though I could pick whatever name I wanted for this argument. From there, we're going to use console.log to print a message. I'm going to say something like Andrew is attending birthday party, then Jen is attending birthday party, followed by Mike. So right here, we'll start off with the person's name, which I can just access via this guest variable. Right here, guest. So we start off with the name, then we'll concatenate on some static text. So Andrew is attending. And right here, after a space, we will concatenate on the name of the event. That would be this dot name exactly like we had up above. Now, if I go ahead and save the program, we can see if things are working and clearly they're not. I have guest list for birthday party, which looks great. Then I have Andrew is attending undefined. The same thing with Jen and Mike. The names are showing up. We're just not seeing the event name at the end of the string. This once again has to do with this bindings. So standard functions like the one we've created here, as I mentioned, are going to have their own this binding. And that's a problem. We actually don't want this function to have its own this binding. I want to be able to access the this binding of its parent function, which is print guest list, because there I was able to use this dot name. Now in the past, there were all sorts of workarounds for this. One I remember from my early JavaScript days was creating a variable called that, setting it equal to this, so essentially creating a reference that we could access later. Then down below in the other function, I would use that dot name, and that would indeed work. So right here, I can see the program works as expected. Now that's not ideal, and that's when arrow functions solved this problem. So I'm going to undo this little that example. I'll switch that back to this and I'll remove the that constant up above. And now we're back to our broken example where we're getting undefined. The solution here is to just swap out this standard function for an arrow function. So I'm going to remove the function keyword and I'm going to put an arrow between the arguments list and our curly braces. When I do this and save the file, we can see our program is working as expected. Arrow functions don't bind their own this value. They access the this value in the context in which they're created, which in this case is right inside of print guest list. That means we have access to this dot name pointing to the property up above. So there are three key takeaways from this video. One is the alternative syntax. So that is comparing this function to this function. The other is the fact that with arrow functions, we have this shorthand syntax. And the last of the three key takeaways is that arrow functions don't bind their own this value. That makes them poor candidates for methods, and it makes them great candidates for pretty much everything else. So throughout this course, we will never use a function where we have that function keyword. We're either going to use arrow functions or, when necessary, we'll use the ES6 method definition syntax, which we've used right here. And that's the approach I've taken with all of my personal and client projects as well. All right, so we've taken a quick look at arrow functions, but you haven't gotten any experience actually using them. In the next video, there's going to be an arrow function challenge, and we're also going to refactor our notes application to use arrow functions everywhere we can. I'm excited to get to that, so let's go ahead and jump right in to the next video.